Hello everyone, this is Dr. Leela. In this video, I am going to discuss on production function with two variables. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe. End difference curve. End difference curve, it is a graphical representation. Here, ratios of two different commodities are different, but they give equal satisfaction. In case, if the individual wants higher satisfaction, he has to increase the ratios which yield him higher satisfaction. Therefore, in difference curve, it is a graph showing combination of two goods that gives the consumer equal satisfaction and utility. In difference curve is used in consumer theory to generate consumer demand curves. Assumptions and properties. Assumptions are rational consumers, two commodities, diminishing marginal rate of substitution and ordinal utility. Let us see in detail. The first one, rational consumers. Rational consumers means a consumer always behaves logically and he always look forward and maximize his level of satisfaction. The second one is two commodities. Customers has a fixed income where he allocates for buying only two commodities. And the third one is diminishing marginal rate of substitution. The indifference curve, it depends on the principle of diminishing marginal rate of substitution. And this principle states that to obtain more units of a specific commodity, the consumer has to let go of some of the units of other products. The last one is ordinal utility. The combination of two commodities are ranked and this is based on the consumer preferences. And the next one is properties. The properties of indifference curve are it slopes downwards from left to right. It is convex to origin. It cannot intersect each other. Let us see in detail. The first one is it slopes downwards from left to right. Indifference curve always slopes from left to right and this indicates that in order to maintain the same level of satisfaction. For example, if consumer increases the consumption of X commodity, he has to give up certain units of Y commodity. And the reason why indifference curve slopes downwards from left to right is if consumers decides to have one more unit of a commodity, quantity of another good must fall so that the total satisfaction remains the same. The second one is it is convex to origin. And difference curve are convex to origin because when the consumer begins to increase his or her use of one good over other. Here the curve represents the marginal rate of substitution. The reason is marginal rate of substitution decreases and this is due to principle of diminishing marginal utility. And the third one is it cannot intersect each other. Indifference curve cannot intersect each other as higher and lower curves shows different levels of satisfaction. Higher indifference curve shows greater satisfaction than the lower indifference curve. Therefore, indifference curve could not, uh, like, uh, it will not intersect each other. Isoquant. Isoquant is also known as product indifference curve or iso product curve. The term iso means same and quantity or product means quantity produced. Isoquant curve, it is a geometric representation of the production function where you are going to take different combinations of labor and capital. Here, labor and capital are employed in order to get the same level of output or in another words, isoquant curve shows all possible combination of input factors that yield same quantity of production. The slope of isoquant curve is called as rate of technical substitution. Rate of technical substitution, it explains that how much capital are to be substituted for the labor to give the same quantity of production if the labor is reduced by one unit. Assumptions of isoquant. The assumptions are adequate combination, two factors of production, divisible factors of production, 
stable production technique, feasibility of technical substitution. Let us see in detail. Adequate combination. Adequate combination here means taking possible combination of the production factors which yields the same output and quantity. That is, factors of production can be used with maximized efficiency. The second one is two factors of production. Only two factors are used to produce a commodity that is capital and labor. And the third one is divisible factors of production. The production factors should be quantifiable or divisible into smaller proportions. And the next one is stable production technique. The production method or technology will remain constant throughout the process. And the last one is feasibility of technical substitution. The substitution between the two factors should be technically possible with one another that is labor and capital. Features of isoquant. The features are downward sloping from left to right, do not intersect each other, do not touch the axis and convex to origin. Let us see in detail. The first one is downward sloping from left to right. The shape of the isoquant is falling from left to right and this is because isoquant curve can be neither rise nor be constant or uh, neither horizontal nor vertical. It is only sloping from left to right. For example, if it is rising curve, this means that output does not increase with increase in inputs. The inputs we are taking over here is labor and capital. But in real time, this is not possible. In another case, if the isoquant is horizontal or vertical, it means that output does not respond to the changes in one of the input factors and this case also is not possible. And the second one is do not intersect each other. If two isoquant uh, intersect, it means that for the same units of labor and capital, two different levels of outputs can be activated and in real time this cannot happen and the third one is do not touch the axis higher the isoquant the higher the output it represents thus the reason it will not touch the axis and the last one is convex to origin the shape of the isoquant is convex to origin and this is because substitution of labor for capital becomes very difficult as more of labor is substituted for capital. Types of isoquant. The types are linear isoquant, input output isoquant, kinged isoquant and convex isoquant. Let us see in detail. The first one is linear isoquant. Linear isoquant it shows the perfect substitutability between the factors of production. This means that any quantity can be produced either employing only capital or only labor or through n number of combinations between these two factors that is capital and labor. But this linear isoquant is an unrealistic approach because here one factor is completely substituting the other in the production process. That is when isoquant curve intersect x axis capital is entirely replaced by the labor and when the curve crosses the y axis the production is done through capital itself that is without employing any labor. The second one is input output isoquant. This isoquant it shows L shaped curve. Here they assumes perfect complementary between factors implying zero substitutability. That is where two factors of production cannot be replaced by one another. When it is not replaced by one another a right angled isoquant curve is formed. And the third one is kinged isoquant. In this type of isoquant, factors of production can substitute each other to a limited extent. Uh, in another words, it is, there is a limited substitutability between the factors of production. This kinged isoquant, it is also known as activity analysis program isoquant or linear programming isoquant because 
engineers, managers and production executives considered the production process as a discrete rather than the continuous process. And the last one is convex isoquant. It assumes continuous substitutability of capital and labor over a certain range beyond which the factors cannot substitute each other. Therefore, when the factors can be substituted for each other, but up to a certain extent, it is called as convex isoquant. Isocost. Isocost line, it is a graphical representation of various combinations of two factors, that is labor and capital, which the firm can afford or purchase with a given amount of money or total outlay. This ISO cost line, it acts as an important tool for determining what combination of factor inputs the firm will choose for the production process. Therefore, ISO cost curve, it shows the combination of factor inputs that have constant market cost. The objective of ISO cost and ISO quant is to determine the optimal input with different combination of variables that is capital and labor in order to maximize the profit and the difference between isoquant and indifference curve is isoquant it represents the quantity of the output whereas indifference curve it represents the quantity of satisfaction and isoquant it represents the combination of factors whereas indifference curve it represents the combination of goods Whereas isoquant, it gives the information regarding the economic and aneconomic region of production, whereas indifference curve does not provide any information regarding economic and aneconomic region of the consumption. Uh, isoquant, it, is, uh, it, it depends on the marginal rate of technical substitution, whereas the slope of indifference curve it depends on the marginal rate of substitution between the two commodities uh, that are consumed by the consumer returns to scale in long run all factors of production are variable returns to scale it refers to the returns that are enjoyed by the firm as a result of change in all the inputs and it explains the behavior of the returns where the inputs are changed simultaneously. The returns to scale are governed by laws of returns to scale. Therefore, returns to scale can be defined as the rate by which the output changes if all the inputs are changed by the same factor. There are three laws of returns governing the production function and the three laws are increasing returns to scale, decreasing returns to scale and constant returns to scale. The first one is increasing returns to scale. Law of increasing returns to scale is said to operate where a given increase in inputs leads to more, more than proportionate increase in the output. And the second one is decreasing returns to scale. The law of decreasing returns to scale is said to operate where the proportionate increase in the inputs does not lead to equivalent increase in output. And here the average uh, cost per unit increases. And the last one is constant returns to scale. The law of constant returns to scale is said to operate when the scope for division of labor gets restricted, the rate of increase in the total output remains constant. Here, that is increasing returns to scale means where output is greater than the input, decreasing returns to scale in the sense where output is less than input or input is greater than output and constant returns to scale in the sense input is always equal to the output. Therefore, the nature of the return to scale affects the shape of a business average cost curve. Returns to factors. Returns to factors, it is also called as factor productivities. It refers to the short-term relationship of input and output. The change of productivity can be measured in three terms, total productivity, average productivity and marginal productivity. Total productivity. Here, 
total fiscal product first increases at an increasing rate because of law of increasing returns to scale and decreases because of law of decreasing returns to scale average productivity here in order to calculate average productivity the formula which we are going to use is total fiscal product divided by number of units and marginal productivity here marginal in the sense here we are talking about the additional here marginal productivity means additional productivity generated by additional input thank you